Just write it the way the lawyers want it written. I said, you know, this is news. This is important. This is stuff people need to know. And I'll never forget, he didn't pause a beat, and he said, we just paid $3 billion for these television stations. We'll tell you what the news is. The news is what we say it is. I said, I'm not doing that. And he said, well, he said, if you refuse to present this story the way we think it should be presented, you'll be fired for insubordination. Running this hearing with five days notice and then trying to jam media consolidation through by mid-December to me is damning evidence by the total abuse of the process itself that you're up to some kind of no good. If this is a legitimate issue, then it deserves and demands a legitimate public process to determine the outcome. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves for not respecting the democracy you live in. Public relations works by putting its message in the mouths of people we trust. It might be Tom Brokaw, it might be some expert that Dan Rather has on the evening news. And the dirty little secret is that on any given day, 40, 50, 60 percent or more of what we see here and read as news is in fact public relations. If we understand the mechanism and motives of the group mind, is it not possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without their knowing it? One of Bernays's main clients was the giant United Fruit Company. They own vast banana plantations in Guatemala in Central America. For decades, United Fruit had controlled the country through pliable dictators. It was known as a banana republic. But in 1950, a young officer, Colonel Arbenz, was elected president. He promised to remove United Fruit's control over the country. And in 1953, he announced the government would take over much of their land. It was a massively popular move, but a disaster for United Fruit. And they turned to Bernays to help get rid of Arbenz. Working with the United Fruit Company, the CIA trained and armed a rebel army and found a new leader for the country called Colonel Armas. The CIA agent in charge was Howard Hunt, later one of the Watergate burglars. What we wanted to do was have a terror campaign uh, to terrify our bench particularly, terrify his, his troops, much as the German Stuka bombers terrified the population of, of uh, Holland, uh, Belgium, and, uh, and Poland at the onset of World War II and just rendered everybody paralyzed. As planes flown by CIA pilots dropped bombs on Guatemala City, Edward Bernays carried on his propaganda campaign in the American press. He was preparing the American population to see this as the liberation of Guatemala by freedom fighters for democracy. He totally understood that the coup would happen when the public and the press when conditions in the public and the press allowed for a coup to happen and he created those conditions. He was totally savvy in terms of just what he was helping create there in terms of this overthrow. But ultimately he was reshaping reality, uh, reshaping public opinion in a way that's undemocratic and manipulative. 
It really has been a magnificent media dance. Enough truth has been sprinkled in to give us the illusion that the full story has been uncovered and has been fully discussed. Yet if one were ever to stop, look, and think about things, it would become real obvious that there's no music at all. It's just a dance. A dance of deception that the whole world can see. And if you do not think that our government and our politicians in collusion with this country's corporate giants are not capable of such lies and deceit, reflect for a moment about the CAA, Department of Defense, NSA, FDA, and DEA, Homeland Security, Voting Irregularities, Unanswered 9-11 Questions, The Iraq War, The Afghanistan War, Halliburton, Blackwater, Torture, Rendition, Patriot Acts 1 and 2, Wiretapping, Enron and Tyco, or the bank bailouts, or that our Federal Reserve banks continue to put billions into the hands of the world's wealthiest elite with interest payments and legally mandated 6% dividends. Wall Street corruption and fraud are legendary. Executive compensation is despicable. In spite of popular support, the public option for health care is eliminated. A false flu pandemic is declared, and unlimited corporate campaign financing is sanctioned by the Supreme Court. The Gulf oil spill is the worst economic and ecological disaster in our history, and most likely was caused by British Petroleum's own greed. Their suppression of information from the public and the government's inability to do anything but wait have become a familiar dance tune. Do you think any of this would have been possible without media's participation? So I'm sad because I, 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 see, I see all of that, that in a flash, flash in my mind, mind as, as being an indication of how easy it is for the masses to be manipulated. Active measures, active мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country.